Now we will discuss about the learning cycle of integrated natural resource management. Let us see that what are the components of INNM learning cycle. So it start with uh, exploratory phase, then reflective phase, implementation phase, evaluation phase, and finally updating phase. Now I will discuss about each phase and what are the activities actually in this learning cycle of INRM we need to carry out. Let us start with the first one exploratory phase. From the name itself it is clear that at the exploratory phase we will be interacting with the community, the different stakeholders, people working at the ground level. So what we do we need? We need to have a stakeholder or institutional analysis in the exploratory phase. Now decision making kind of rationals, interests, mental models, all those exercises will be carried out at the exploratory phase. Then comes the important aspect, historical trend analysis. How over a period of time in this particular area for different you know, natural resources, how it worked over a you know, period of time. Then resource assessment including participatory mapping which we have discussed in the previous classes in quite detail. Analysis of external influences, how you know different external influences like say you know some policy decision at the government level, then any change in the political discourse, then inflow of you know investment into that area, demand of resources for different product development. There are many aspects actually involved. So, Exploratory visioning, needs and problem analysis is also part of your this first phase exploratory phase. Identification of scale of analysis and possible interventions. So these are the particular you know activities which we largely carry out at the exploratory phase. Then comes that uh, the next is reflective phase. In reflective phase what we do is that we you know try to negotiate on the interests and you know of the community and we try to uh, somehow you know generate a kind of a sense of a collective actions at the ground level. So negotiation for land use suppose that in one area suppose one natural resources are utilized or exploited in a regular interval and across the all seasons. So naturally that particular natural resources will get diminished and very fast from that ecosystem or that particular area. So we need to somehow create a kind of awareness among the community that how best that they can manage their land use system so that a particular natural resources should not be you know utilized in such extensive manner that before it gets rejuvenated through natural process we finish it completely. Say for an example cultivation of certain crop, any crop, a crop which suppose requires huge amount of water and now suppose in an area where rainfall is not that much say medium or less rainfall but you are growing a crop which is demanding high amount of water. Now you are growing that probably that particular crop provides the grain or food which is staple for, for you. So it is very difficult to change no, suddenly that. But at the same time you know that this requires huge amount of water and water is a scarce community, scarce natural resource in your area. So what would be the sustainable solution for that? The sustainable solution probably would be that you have a balance in your land use instead of growing that particular water demanding heavy water demanding crop continuously probably you can have a crop mix crop mix which all has less you know uh, water demand so during that period when you are growing the less water demanding crops you can actually concentrate or focus on enhancing or recharging the water base in that particular area. So that could be one way actually to, to you know address these issues. So then exposures you know to various options, identify the best options that you can have, identify research needs, 
for solving certain issues problem in an area then linking responsibilities and task of local organization you know when you go to the field you will see that in any area there are various local organization some of them are working suppose on water some of them are working on soil some are working on crop diversity few are working on dairy so i mean a lot of things now it is important that that all these local uh, grassroots level organizations they work you know at least kind of a harmony because these all uh, you know different livelihood options in an area are very much interlinked to each other so you will find that you opt for one livelihood and suppose one organization is working towards that and they are encouraging that particular livelihood whereas the other livelihood option probably uh, you know the organization who are working not that much aggressive so what happen is that that one particular livelihood options start getting developing very fast so the raw material required for that particular livelihood options will be much higher so the important is that that these all you know different livelihood options and so the organizations who are working with this should work in a harmony because that is the uh, you know best way to manage your natural resources and and that's the way that is also the part of integrated natural resource management so identification of pre conditions for scaling up of any activities that also one needs to identify suppose that your area is uh, having you know some scarcity of water so you need to go for say ground water recharging okay so what you have to do you will go for you know some technical interventions there so when you go for those technical interventions supposed to recharge your ground water you need to also see certain preconditions whether your interventions for recharging of ground water should not lead to another problem so you know checking of preconditions for any of your intervention for the good of that particular area also need to be checked now development of performance indicator it is very important suppose we are working in an area for months and years but there is no way no way that we can actually you know identify that how much we have progressed from point a to point b or point a to minus towards negative side so that you can only do when you have some indicator a uh, performance indicator to actually judge the impact of your intervention in a particular area so there are couple of other aspects also to look after identifying suppose key components of the system then scales and boundaries if you actually go for any kind of strategy development or planning or any kind of development uh, growth strategy you need to actually identify the scale of that the boundaries of a particular you know uh, related to a particular natural resources so one may be different from the other so you are suppose thinking about water that could be very much different from another resources suppose soil so these things uh, are very important to keep in mind develop through way uh, models sometime it is important to have some uh, few through way models also in our hand and then scenario analysis and identify leverage point so whatever uh, conditions that we are working we also need to find out that e- suppose that there is a change in future in anticipation of that change we also need to find out our requirement the potential requirement of natural resources uh, by the community or the area so those futuristic analysis scenario analysis are also important for a long term plan which actually uh, could facilitate the sustainable you know development of a particular area then comes uh, you know your implementation phase all of us we know that uh, implementation of any kind of initiative at the ground level is a big challenge so you need to actually have few enabling conditions you know to have those particular intervention implement and successfully in an area and not only implement them then to scale up 
that is an another challenge because any intervention in a particular area it should not be restricted to that particular pocket it has to go horizontally and also vertically so the scale up of horizontal and vertical it is also need to be planned and take care of implementation phase is also critically important because that is the phase which will decide that how your intervention policy intervention technical intervention actually is going to lead INLM in which direction sustainable management of natural resources or unsustainable management of natural resources so implementation stage is very very critical for INRM now evaluation phase this phase will actually allow you to find out that whether we we have done all the exercise properly the steps that we have taken are actually beneficial the policy that has been implemented on the ground are conducive for you know sustainable use of natural resources so evaluation phase actually will tell us about these things and if we find that that we could not do the job in appropriate manner we should go back correct our implementation and even if in the implementation we find that no it is even at the negotiation of land use cropping system itself need to be looked at so there is no harm to go back and uh, readjust and then again implement and come back evaluation phase also will give lot of learnings you know lot of successes and some failures so those all those information would help you actually to update update your understanding update your knowledge and that will actually help a better implementation probably in the next time so overall the learning cycle in case of inrm provide lot of opportunity for actually establishing the sustainable development system so that that is why it is important that from the very beginning when the very first phase that is exploratory phase we keep few things in mind that is it has to be inclusive largely equitable and also a very reflective approach needs to be taken from the very beginning whatever implementation and whatever work that will be carried out under INRM we need to see that in which direction finally it will take so reflective phase is very important because there you actually try to find out the balance between different land use system everything the demand of natural resources exploitation or or even futuristic requirement of natural resources is based on largely on the land use that people will you know uh, go for so from that point itself it is it is uh, very critical that there is a kind of a balance between various land use and then you will see that the demand for any single natural resources will not be there there will be some balances and that balance is key for integrated natural resource management INRM plan so we call it INRMP integrated natural resource management plan so what does INRM plan contains it includes a description of the installation its history and its current mission what actually it is doing at present next management goals and associated time frames what are the activity will be carried out and within which time frame that is also important and it is there under inrm plan projects to be implemented and estimated cost should be estimated so any project that you are planning to implement the required cost has to be also estimated discussions on how military mission and training requirements are supported while protecting the environment now this is you know something that is very critical in some parts of our country as well as you know elsewhere now 
there are often it happens that uh, there are certain obvious requirements for you know different kind of uh, activities for the security of our you know country so for different this kind of obvious needs sometime natural resources need to be you know compromised not very willingly but it is kind of situational now that also can be addressed how we can maximum you know uh, balance that requirement that very uh, sensitive requirement of various resources and at the same time to protect the environment legal requirements and biological needs of the natural resources is again another very sensitive issues many times you will see that uh, various parts of our country and elsewhere in the world that certain natural resources uh, are very very integral part of our society and our family now the biological the needs of those natural resources in our you know biological system is certain certain amount of kind of association with our lifestyle our you know what you call very existence in some parts or some culture is that totally dependent on certain natural resources you cannot just separate uh, you know those natural resources from uh, a particular community uh, in certain areas so that is also another thing that uh, integrated natural resource management plan should have in their mind the role of installations uh, natural resources in the context of surrounding ecosystems is is also important um, suppose you are suddenly um, uh, building something in an area where which is surrounded by very rich uh, biodiversity or maybe you know full of biomedicinal uh, plants and then you you have a installation which perhaps is is very very important Uh, from a point of view for the human well being itself but it is also need to be seen that how in the context of that particular ecosystem in the context of the natural resources that are available in that ecosystem how they are actually going to get impacted that also need to be seen now input uh, uh, from fish and wildlife services state fish and wildlife agencies and also general public they also need to be considered in this planning exercise for integrated natural resource management a lot of uh, people you know in our country as well as elsewhere they actually survive on uh, fish and different kind of wildlife services now if those services are somehow get impacted probably a huge number of people livelihood will be at stake and i would go one step further if their livelihood get disturbed then probably probably you know the entire dynamics in that particular society could go completely uh, in different directions so it is important from you know this point of view that we should have a a good plan for integrated natural resource management for an area and these are the different aspect which often becomes very sensitive you know so need to be considered and discussed and as i said that uh, discussions dialogues can solve uh, many seems completely you know unsolvable problem can be solved also through through dialogues so that is one aspect that integrated natural resource management encourage us to do what are the utility of this integrated natural resource management plan if you see that in case of fish and wildlife management then land management forest management fish and wildlife oriented recreation also inrm plays a very important role so fish and wildlife habitat as i said earlier also you know it can be managed in a nice way if we follow the inrm rules it can actually enhance the lively associated livelihood to these uh, resources wetland protections i mean all of you might be knowing that how important is wetland you know in our ecosystem so restoration of wetlands uh, because that wetland actually also support a uh, various fish wildlife and plants so that also need to be there in the in the plan integration of and consistency among the various activities that 
actually are conducted under INRM plan also need to be looked at. So any kind of activities carried out in INRM should not happen actually in isolation. There has to be a kind of a uh, what you call one uh, aspect of INRM if it is being uh, carried out the other aspect also should be you know uh, equally given importance. Now sustainable use of public natural resources to the extent that use is not inconsistent okay. So means as I said couple of minutes back that it is important that balanced use of natural resources like you know forest, fish, wildlife is very very critical. Public access to certain military installation that is necessary and appropriate for the use is subject to requirements necessary to ensure safety and military security. Now these installations of military unit you will find often in very remote area inside a forest sometime in an area where biodiversity is very rich. So those areas also need to be kept in the INN plan that how to how to adjust that little bit of the disturbances of due to these installations in, you know within that particular uh, ecosystem. Now enforcement of applicable natural resources laws and regulations is very very important. How you know good the different existing law and regulations are being implemented on the ground can actually uh, be crucial for successful implementation of INRM. No net loss in the you know capability of military installation lands uh, to support the military mission of the installations also need to be kept in mind. So these are couple of you know utility that uh, INRM plan uh, provides. So this also uh, looked at also place to place you have to see that one place probably uh, some of the constituents here working absolutely in the way the way it is recommended for in some areas probably they are not. So little bit of uh, you know location wise adjustment probably needed. Constraints for upscaling often uh, you will find that if you go for integrated natural resource management you will find that lot of uh, challenges and constraints for scaling up any of your activity or initiative under INRM. Some of them are like absence of upscaling strategies of INRM within the area that you are working sometime create a lot of hurdles for the system to work on INRM. Adequacy in the integration of policy implementation and decision making could be another constant. Insufficient evidence based knowledge for INRM implementation is one critical constraint that often on the ground you will face it. Evidence based knowledge because if you just you know go and ask a community or someone that stop utilizing this particular natural resources they may not. So we need to have a certain kind of, of first alternative option for that second that some evidences that if this is the way this particular resources is being used it could lead to there and if it is used in the other way it could lead you there. So this kind of evidence based you know knowledge often help the practitioners to convince the community or convince the people the client who actually are going to uh, be there with this resource base in their community. So there are a couple of more actually constants uh, you will find when you start working at the ground level. Integrated water resource management water is one of the natural resources and IWRM is also you know is a, a very popular concept. IWRM has been defined as a process which promotes the coordinated development and management of water, land and related resources in order to maximize the resultant economic and social welfare in an equitable manner without compromising the sustainability of vital ecosystem. So the key word as you find here coordinated development, equitable manner, sustainability of vital ecosystem. So more or less it IWRM also working 
we know with the same philosophy as INRM. IWRM framework, how actually it is, you know, based on first social equity. It ensures equal access for all users to the water and inadequate quantity and quality for a sustainable well-being. That is social equity as IWRM prescribes. Economic efficiency. Why? Bringing the greatest benefit to the greatest number of users possible with the available financial and water resources. So the maximizing the benefit with the available water resources to the people. That is what is the economic efficiency. Ecological sustainability. Requiring that aquatic ecosystems are acknowledged as users and that adequate allocation is made to sustain their natural functioning means that we need to give proper value to the water as a resources and we also as an users we need to acknowledge that this particular natural resource water if we want them to be available in the coming years and decades in a particular area so we need to manage them in a very judicious manner so aquatic system management with ecological sustainability mind frame is also critical for its best management. So with this we actually uh, conclude the integrated natural resource management concept is philosophy, is functioning, is different frameworks, how it works, it different constraints, is life uh, learning of life cycle of particularly INRM, how it works, what are the different phases. So overall that uh, integrated natural resource management is a kind of a uh, umbrella that actually provide us how actually we should behave or how we should actually take care of the natural resources which are the very fundamental basis of our existence, our sustainable development or sustainable well-being. Mm -hmm.